Macroscopic discussion of an ideal gas in a gravitational field. Consider the ideal gas of the last problem from a completely macroscopic point of view. By writing down the condition of mechanical equilibrium for a slice of the gas located between the heights z and z plus dz, and by using the equation of state, derive an expression for n is a function of c, the number of molecules per unit volume at a height z. Compare this with the result for the probability distribution derived in the last problem on the basis of statistical mechanics. So here I have drawn a slice between z and z plus dz and I have to write the forces acting on this slice. Well, due to the mass of the gas molecules inside this slice, there is the gravitational force Fg. The gas molecules under the slice are exerting a pressure in the positive z direction and the gas molecules above the slice are exerting a pressure in the negative z direction. And on the other hand, I have the ideal gas law, the equation of state P bar V is equal to capital NKT. Uh, average pressure times volume is number of uh, molecules times Boltzmann constant times temperature. So in order to calculate the gravitational force acting on this slice, I have to calculate the total mass inside the slice. So the total mass in the slice, I'm going to call capital M. And capital M will be equal to the number of molecules in the slice multiplied by M mass per molecule. So the the mass of one molecule. So this is going to be equal to, uh, I have a number density, capital N divided by V, this is the concentration of gas molecules. Uh, then I call the cross-sectional area here, uh, I call this cross-sectional area A. So if I multiply the cross-sectional area A with the thickness of the slice dz, I will getting I will be getting the volume of the slice. So this is a volume of the slice. A is my cross-sectional area, and uh, then I have the mass of one molecule m. So I know the number of molecules in the slice. It's number density times the volume of the slice multiplied by the mass of one molecule. So this will be equal to uh, capital NAM dz and for the volume I can go to the uh, ideal gas law uh, because the ideal gas law says the volume is equal to uh, Or I can say that the number density can be found from P bar is equal to capital N over V K T. So for capital N over V, I can substitute uh, N K T. So N is P bar over K T. So that's the number density. So instead of uh, writing it uh, this way, for uh, capital N over V, I'm substituting this with P bar over KT. So this is P bar divided by KT A dz times M. So uh, therefore I can get to the gravitational force under the influence of G, gravitational acceleration. There is a gravitational force Fg which can be written vectorially as minus mg j hat, which is minus uh, mg a dz p bar divided by kt in j hat direction. So this is the uh, first force I can calculate. Now the gas molecules are equal 
are in equilibrium, mechanical equilibrium, so there is an opposing force, and the opposing force will come from the differential in the pressure. So there is the pressure of the gas exerted from the gas molecules above the slice, and there is the pressure exerted from below the slice. So let me note that the gas molecules are in equilibrium, are in mechanical equilibrium, so the force opposing the gravitational force is due to the pressure differential between z and z plus dz so I can write uh, the force due to the uh, pressure differential as f prime now there is the force that is being applied from uh, the top uh, pointing down so it's going to be the uh, pressure is force per area so uh, area multiplied by uh, P bar Z that is pointing up minus P bar Z plus DZ that is pointing down so this is the force pointing up so that is uh, area times P bar Z that is pointing up minus P bar Z plus DZ that's pointing down so the net force pointing up is this so uh, this is F prime the force that balances the gravitational force the net force must be equal to zero because we are in mechanical equilibrium. So if I write the net force, I have uh, minus capital M G J hat, that is my gravitational force, and then I have uh, plus area times P bar Z minus p bar z plus dz j hat this should be equal to zero so uh, I can find that because for m I substitute this quantity uh, m a d z p bar over k t so let me substitute that quantity here so this is minus m g a d z P bar over KT that is uh, in J hat direction so this is in minus J hat direction that's the force and this is equal to uh, on the other hand if I take this to the right hand side uh, area times uh, P bar Z plus DZ minus P bar Z so um, I have taken the second term to the right hand side so I have introduced a minus sign so this is going to be in J hat direction so now I can see that these J hats will uh, disappear and I can see that the areas will disappear and I will be left with uh, the following minus m g uh, divided by k t d z is equal to p bar z plus d z minus p bar z divided by p bar so if i take uh, dz to the right hand side and p bar uh, back to the left hand side so it's it seems that that's what I should have done so keep p bar here and take dz to the right hand side so my, I have minus mg over kt p bar on the left hand side and p bar z plus dz minus p bar z divided by dz on the right hand side so 
as dz goes to zero, uh, this expression p bar z plus dz minus p bar z divided by dz is approaching the derivative dp bar dz. So uh, I have minus mg over kt p bar is equal to uh, dp bar dz, the derivative of the pressure with respect to z. Now, uh, in order to find uh, p bar as a function of z, if I take z to the left hand side minus mg over kt dz, I have dp bar over p bar on the right hand side and I integrate the two sides from the pressure at a reference point uh, p0 to a pressure p as a function of z so that's the pressure at z is equal to zero let's say so this is going to be from zero to z so the left hand side of the integral will give me well beta is equal to one over kt so the left hand side will give me minus beta mg z the right hand side will give me natural logarithm p divided by p zero uh, and therefore I will find that the pressure uh, is given as a function of z as p0 e to the minus beta mg z. Now uh, I also have p bar is equal to nkt the number density times the thermal energy so uh, at constant uh, temperature uh, I have p bar uh, varying with the number density and so the, these two uh, are linearly proportional therefore this implies that the number density at point z is n0 e to the minus beta mg z so that's how the uh, concentration of molecules change with z. Now the problem also asks me to compare this with the probability distribution that was derived in the previous problem. The probability distribution was e to the minus beta mg z dz. So uh, if you remember we find the average number of molecules by multiplying with the total number of uh, molecules capital N the probability density uh, p pz so uh, this is consistent with the previous result with the statistical mechanics result the probability density p of z dz was found to be e to the minus beta mgz dz so we find the average number by multiplying the total number of molecules with the probability density and basically that will be reflected as n bar as a function of z is n0 times e to the minus beta mgz the same functional dependence okay so we are analyzing the ideal gas in a gravitational acceleration uh, in in the presence of gravity uh, from a totally classical uh, point of view without considering the statistical mechanics uh, we're only using this equation of state which is the ideal gas law and uh, we find that in a slice between z and z plus dz we have a total mass of the gas capital M that is the number of molecules inside the slice multiplied by the mass of one molecule how do I find the number of molecules in the slice? I have the number density multiplied by the volume of the slice, which is the cross-sectional area times the thickness of the slice, dz. So the number density, according to the ideal gas law, is related to p bar and kt. It's p bar over kt. And so I substitute that. Uh, so p bar over kt, a dz m is my total mass, and minus mg is the gravitational force. On the other hand, I have a pressure differential on this slice because I have gas molecules above it exerting a pressure down and gas molecules below it exerting a pressure up. So this pressure differential will be 
counterbalancing the gravitational uh, force. So this pressure uh, the, uh, causes a force area times the pressure, P bar Z, A times P bar Z pointing up, A times P bar Z plus DZ pointing down. The net force has to be zero. When I write the net force and rearrange, I find that <coughs> I get an equation uh, dp over p is equal to minus mg over kt dz. So this can be integrated from z is equal to zero to z uh, from uh, the pressure at z equals zero to pressure at z. Uh, and I find that the pressure is decaying exponentially with z. At constant temperature, that implies that since p bar is proportional to n, the number concentration the concentration of uh, number density or concentration of uh, molecules is uh, decreasing exponentially with z and this is consistent with the probability distribution we have calculated in the previous problem using arguments based on statistical mechanics.